well, I guess, like, to me, like, being, like, working with Andrew is more like, more like a friend to me. You know, like, I like having him come over and, like, someone to talk to. I was in such a low point and I was so afraid and scared and he was there for me. And that's the best thing anyone can ever do for you is just help you. You know, my family's dead. I've got no real friends out here. I've got my partner now. Back then I had no friends, I had no, no support, I had nothing, you know, and these places really huh, done so much for me. Without them, I'd be lost. I'd probably be still on drugs today. And they've, I've come a long way with the living room and what they've done for me. You know, there'd be a lot more people, uh, you know, that would be, I suppose, institutionalised, you know, whether it be mental health or um, jail. Just to have a coffee and tea and talk to people, it, it's uh, something to look forward to in a day. Youth Projects is an organisation that, it, at the grassroots level, looks after people that are in need. It was a project that, uh, like a few others I suppose when we came to government, uh, deserved government support. These were tough times, they were times when uh, the economy was in decline, there had been uh, uh, evidence of further decline. Youth Projects aims to provide a, a range, a comprehensive range of, of services for um, disadvantaged clients groups. Youth Projects now has built up a suite of programs that make those connections in people's lives a one-stop shop where you can have those issues addressed. We won't leave you with just one issue looked at. Some of the things we've been doing have been innovative like opening up a commercial kitchen where people can learn to work in the hospitality industry but we can also train people in health and nutrition. We do a range of projects and programs around uh, establishing apprenticeships with businesses and, and uh, getting young people engaged um, with, with the workplace. Before I came to Youth Projects I didn't really have many aspirations of what I wanted to do. I sort of been made to feel like I wasn't able to do anything. I was always sort of told that I was, you know, useless at doing anything, so I believed it. What we're hoping is that they'll be able to gain something from an experience in interacting with youth projects. Whenever I f fell over, they were there to pick me up and give me the support I needed. The crippling social isolation that a lot of our clients suffer, I think, is a bit of a sleeper of an issue. I think it's poorly understood that with unemployment become, comes a sense of social isolation that then just feeds into uh, uh, more barriers to participating in, in the community. The great thing about, about work, I think, is that it's, no matter what it is, it's the way in which a person, young or old, uh, defines their contribution to society. And that's important, I think. There's nothing more debilitating than being uh, unemployed and being seen as uh, not contributing to society. At the moment, I'm doing a business traineeship. Um, that goes to 2011. And then um, my boss is going to pay half, and I'm going to pay half to do a paralegal course, and I'm going to go as a matured student to one of the courses here and then I'm going to become paralegal or clerk um, and then come back here and hopefully work here for the next few years or become partner. Why Not Program stands for the Youth and Adult Northern Outreach Team. It's an outreach service for people over the age of 12 who are experiencing drug and alcohol problems. I like having him come over and like someone to talk to and he's good because I know I can trust him. I've been working with him for a year now. I feel like I can tell him anything. You know? The idea is that we work within the government's harm minimisation framework, obviously to reduce the harm of the drugs that are being used. They've helped me see what's, what's more important than dope in my life, what's more, what should be more clear to me, like my family. The idea of 
of having an outreach service, especially in an area like the northern suburbs of Melbourne, is that it's quite a big area. Public transport is not very good. There's a lot of um, services, or there's a lot of services in town, but there isn't very many when you get out of town, you know, and a lot of people don't have transport, and we find that a lot of people won't attend appointments, so we get to see them in the community. The idea is to help them identify goals around their drug use, whether that be to stabilise it or reduce it or abstain from it completely, and we work towards that. I just made me realise that spending 60, 70 dollars on a little bag, sitting on the couch, when you can just get up and do much more with your life. Yeah. And it did, did help a lot. Even though there were obvious things, I just couldn't say it. Youth Projects first opened the living room in October 2002. It was part of the Victorian Government's Drug Initiative Strategy to address um, Melbourne Metropolitan's hotspots, drug hotspots. The living room was established because in the late 90s there was a huge influx of very pure heroin on the streets of Melbourne. There was a lot of concern about the alarming ri rise in overdoses and uh, a perception about a lot of drug taking on the streets of Melbourne. Imagine being homeless and there's nowhere to take a shower, there's nowhere to wash your clothes, there's nowhere to send or receive mail or access the internet, there's nowhere to store your things, there's nowhere to eat or even have a conversation with another human being. We provide those sorts of very simple things that can make a big difference, but we also do the rest. We also have mental health counselling. We have doctors and nurses. We have a GP and a health nurse. Um, we have community development workers that offer support um, and assistance to the clients. We've got some allied health programs. We have a podiatrist, a nutritionist. We're able to show that if you fund a service that can provide a broad range of strategies in addressing injecting drug use, the chances of success are that much greater. The living room's, you know, given a lot of advice, um, a lot of uh, options. Just came here for a coffee one day. I had uh, issues at the time, a few problems with drugs and alcohol and other issues, and uh, I met with the staff here and they were great. My boyfriend Adam introduced me to the living room last year. I came down here, I had a few problems, I was very depressed, wasn't myself, wasn't sort of like my head wasn't together. And I got told the living room's a good place, they have workers, they get involved with drug and alcohol counsellors. Most often they're not able to access these kinds of services, so it gives them a, a place where they can come, where they can feel comfortable, they're not, it's non judgmental, they're not going to be judged, they're not going to be pushed out because of the way they look or the fact that they. Um, are using, you know, illicit drugs. When I got involved in this, I found it helped me out a lot. I've got a daughter in under um, foster care, so they've helped me with that. Um, you know, I get my mail sent here, things like that. Um, I've got myself a partner who I've met through the living room as well, who's another client of the living room. Um, and she's been a real big stepping stone for me, as has the living room, um, into my recovery. And I'm just, I'm, I, was, I can't say enough. One stage I felt really suicidal, I was going to end my life. They got me to the hospital, which helped me. When I came out, the hospital didn't, I didn't have any links up with the hospital, but the living room got me linked up in things here. So now I can go to places where I'm linked up with doctors and a psychiatrist, so I can get my life back on track. It's a place where, you know, you can actually come, have a bit of a break, a cuppa, a chat, and the staff here aren't about themselves, it's not an I, I, I issue, it's, you know, it's us. Got access to my children, uh, life's just heaps better, thanks to this place. I'd be lost without the living room, completely lost. People sometimes feel powerless about what they can actually do, but knowing that there is a service here that caters and, and assists to uh, look after um, people that are dealing with difficulties or challenges in their life, um, yeah, is usually gives people a good feeling. If we go back 25 years, I mean, when HIV became um, a real issue and it was apparent there was a link between injecting drug use and the spread of HIV infection, we had to think about what sort of responses we could put in place. Um, and it became really clear that one of the main vectors for the spread of infection was using unsterile needles and syringes. It was a ferocious campaign in the mid-80s trying to make public uh, awareness of the issue of age or HIV 
and uh, some fairly confronting uh, public relations, TV advertising. I think some community organisations were a bit reluctant to, to embrace that, but uh, that wasn't the case with, uh, with Youth Project. There were a number of studies that looked at comparing countries that had needle syringe programs early in the epidemic and those that didn't, and the USA was a really good example of that. They didn't have needle syringe programs, they had community outreach programs, and they had levels of HIV infection amongst their injected drug users that was high as 50% whereas in places like Australia, Holland and um, the UK, the levels were kept way below 5%. Our needle syringe program, which is the foot patrol and is mobile on foot through the streets and lanes of Melbourne, is unique in the world. It's one of the first mobile syringe programs and has been the subject of attention uh, around the world because no one else is doing it. What's unique is the opportunity for connection to go where the people who need help are and establish a very personal relationship. Our first port of call where we first start um, delivering syringes is Town Hall which is the corner of Collins and Swanston and so from there we generally um, walk up to Burke Street and do the block of Burke, Russell, Lonsdale and Swanston. After doing a few blocks and saying good day to a few people, seeing who's out, seeing if anything different's going on in the city, police presence, etc. Might um, have a seat somewhere. Clients can contact us either free call from any public phone or they can give us a call on our mobile phone. The great thing about being identifiable in that way is you're doing two things. You're actually um, showing the public that this is something that's a, a, a normal part of our public health response. You're allowing the drug user uh, or the, the, the client of that service to, 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 to um, be able to identify and be accessible to, to the needle syringe programs. Um, and also you're getting out there where the drug users are. We mainly provide the provision of clean injecting equipment and paraphernalia associated with injecting. We give out safer using advice, harm prevention, provide uh, safe sex information, safer using. We're a uh, contact for referrals to hospitals, to detoxes, to getting help with material aid for people who are sleeping rough on the streets. Drug users are, are people's, you know, husbands, wives, brothers, sisters, they have their their own you know, um, relationships. Our main focus here at Foot Patrol is to stop the spread of HIV, Hep C and other bloodborne viruses and that's in the drug using community and the wider community as well so that's our main focus. Also we incorporate a daily cleanup. Every day uh, two workers will go out on a clean up from 9.30 till 2.30 in the CBD. The 150 million that was invested in needle syringe programs between 1990 and 2000, there was an estimated return of between 2.4 and 7.7 .7 billion dollars in savings to, to, to healthcare. Uh, 21,000 cases of hepatitis C estimated, and probably most importantly, 5,000 lives saved between 19, 1990 and 2010. Our 25 years of growth have shown through experience that there's a need to make connections in the areas of people's lives where they need help. It's never just the one thing, we need to make the connections between health and well-being, around nutrition, around unemployment, educational opportunities, how they're interacting with the school system and of course uh, the rising issue of uh, poor mental health. Times like these when, we, when there is, I guess, um, you know, constraints on the economy to be able to sustain itself. Uh, the level of disadvantage rises and by nature more people are looking to be provided with some sort of support or service. In the last couple of years Youth Projects has grown enormously. It's been a direct response to enormous increase in need. The growing gap between rich and poor has been impossible to overlook. We have seen levels of poverty grow. Our clients seem hungrier, they seem more vulnerable. So in the past couple of years, uh, we've almost doubled our services because the demand at our doorstep is huge. So Youth Projects is the kind of service that we need in a city like Melbourne where people have a whole range of problems. 
and they can go to that service and know that, sure, at that moment they might want the, the needle and syringe out of the guy's backpack, but that person's also going to be able to refer them on to some help around the housing, legal, social welfare issues. That's a fantastic uh, contribution to, to Melbourne. It would be nice to say that in 25 years uh, there was almost no unemployment, that people's mental health was better and that we were not seeing the ill effects of substance abuse. Um, I'd love to say that, I'd love to say those weren't the issues we'd be looking at, but um, time will tell around that, but we'll make a difference in that.